So I have a question for you. Why is Aqua Di Gio still good? Hey fragrance family, I'm Dave and I'm a fragrance bro. Of course, your best source for everything fragrance related. Today I have a video that I am curious about. I, I have a question I want to pose to you and that is why is Aqua Di Gio or Aqua Di Gio however you say it, why is it still good? Now recently I did a video on why is Curve still good? And I had a lot of good responses from that. And I still don't know why Curve is so good, but it still is. My question today though is a little bit different. With Curve, I really do genuinely believe it's still good. But with ADG by Armani, I am not so sure. Now I don't have a full bottle of this to show you, but I do have a little tiny mini if you wanna see that. <laughs> now I'm just gonna pronounce it Aqua Di Gio. I don't know if that's correct or if it's not but you know what I mean. Now, Aqua Di Gio was released in 1996, and when it landed, it made waves, literally and figuratively. It's an aquatic type of fragrance, and it really launched a great era in perfumery for Armani, for one, because it was a mega hit with them, but it also launched this aquatic genre trend, and that was in the perfume world for years. And it probably went on a little bit too long, and there's not a whole lot of fragrances I think are good in that genre in particular. Now, I have a particular story with this one. This was one of the fragrances that really kind of kicked off the journey with me with fragrances. I have always been interested in fragrances to some degree. I remember getting some aftershaves, colognes type of things from my dad, and they were just from the drugstore, and they're in like a little shaving kit. Over the years, I would get some colognes that maybe friends or family would give me for special occasions, birthdays, uh, holidays, that type of thing. But this was one that I actually bought myself. And after that point, I remember going through a couple of bottles, and that's how my kind of career in fragrances kind of kicked off. That was like the, the seeds of my journey right there. Over the years, I've grown out of it, mostly because I think there are other fragrances that really wow me more than this. And at the time that I bought this, I didn't have a whole lot of experience with fragrances, so I didn't have a lot to go on. And I've grown out of love with this. But I wanted to kind of come back to this because I was reminded of this recently from a couple of different places. Recently, kind of out in the wild, I've smelled a couple of guys that I know that have worn this. And I can easily identify this really easily. And I thought, man, I haven't smelled that in a while. And I'm kind of actually surprised that they're wearing it still. And then I also saw some posts recently on Instagram of a couple of people really singing its praises, saying how it's one of their favorite fragrances or reminds them of memories. So I wanted to kind of revisit it to see if it's held up. Personally, I don't think it has. One of the pros and cons about a trendsetter like this is that it is great if you're an early adopter. If you're an early adopter of this, you'll smell like no one else. But if you're late to the party, you'll smell like everyone else. And that is something that is not great about something that is a trendsetter. And that is unfortunately the case with Aqua Di Gio. Uh, one of the problems with this fragrance is that not only will you smell like someone else, if you're looking to be in a romantic situation, you'll often smell like someone who's worse. And that kind of sours the well a little bit. You don't want to smell like someone else's memory. You want to smell like yourself. Another thing is this spawned so many, so many copycats and clones that I don't think that this smells very unique anymore. The market was so saturated with ADG smell-alikes that I don't think that this fragrance adds much more to the, the conversation. Even if it's the original one, there's so many out there that it kind of smells generic at this point, which is really a shame because it was the original. Also, I'm not exactly sure how that's held up over time. I'm sure that this has been reformulated over time. That's just kind of inevitable with these fragrances. And I don't have the original version to compare to this. I'm sure that it's probably a shell of what the original ones was like. But what I smell now, I don't really like. What I get is what I remember anyway of that type of smell. It is citrusy. It is somewhat salty and very green, and it has almost like this very traditional masculine type of heart in there that not a lot of people talk about. This, I think, is a crucial point with Aqua Di Gio. It is unique in the way that it adds citruses and kind of a saltiness to it, but the saltiness is not that apparent in this. And what I get mostly is just kind of this wispy, bland cocktail of citruses and green notes. It, almost smells stale to me right away whenever you spray it on your skin. It's almost the opposite of fresh. Like you want this to be fresh with all the notes in there. When you spray it right away, it almost instantly loses any kind of vigor or vibrancy. It's just kind of like this one note dull thing that I don't really care for at all. I kind of actually think that this bottle actually represents it really well. It's like this gray, foggy 
type of thing that I don't think is that great. It has a, a little bit of a watery quality to it. What I don't hear a lot of people talk about is the old school masculine thing that it has going on in the heart. I do get like coriander, I do get patchouli and oak moss and a cedar note in there as well. It reminds me of old school masculines mixed with a kind of salty, watery, seaweed type of thing. I don't think this smells good anymore. And I really honestly don't ever recommend this to anyone else because I think it kind of smells bad. There are fragrances out there that I think do it much better. If you're looking for aquatic type of fragrances, I think there are ones out there that smell better, that smell more unique maybe. If you're looking for something that is bright and vibrant, there's a million other citrus fragrances out there that smell much better. Performance on this, I remember not being super great. Even when I got it years and years ago, it wasn't super great to start with. Now, it's probably even worse and I haven't worn it to test it out recently, but I'm not super optimistic about it. But I would love to hear what you think of Aqua Di Gio. Is it still worth the hype? I know there are a lot of fans out there of this fragrance, and I don't necessarily mean to kind of poo-poo this fragrance because it was hyped up. It's a little bit sad watching the sunset of its life because I don't think it's as good as it used to be. Maybe it's just my memory of it being better at that time. Maybe it's reformulations that have made it worse, or maybe it's its own success that has soured itself and made it a generic version of its own self. Maybe it's all of those things. I just don't really care for Aqua Di Gio anymore. But what do you think? I would love to hear your thoughts. Let me know down in the comments down below. With that, I'd like to thank my sponsor, Fragrance X. Fragrance X is an online retailer that sells thousands of legitimate fragrances for a discounted price. If you're considering buying a fragrance, definitely check out Fragrance X. I'll have a link down below to them as well as a coupon. Thank you again for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Click that little bell so you get a notification every time I make an upload. Thank you again for watching. I'm Dave with Fragrance Bros. Bye.